Very good morning, all of you. Uh, myself, Sachin Dubai, working as an assistant professor in the Studio Institute. So, today uh, we are going to see the practical of pharmaceutical organic chemistry. Okay. So, uh, in organic chemistry, we are performing different different techniques for purifying the compound. Okay. And it is very necessary to purify the compound because the presence of uh, some impurity. Uh, in our product, okay. So it will not give you proper characterization. For example, it will not give you proper melting point. Okay. So there is necessity to clear it. Okay. So likewise, the first technique is recrystallization uh, and uh, for separation of, uh, of other techniques, uh, the separation of other aromatic compounds like steam distillation is there. Okay. That is different one. So here today we are going to see recrystallization. Recrystallization is just to purify the compound or to remove the impurity from the compound. So, our aim is to perform recrystallization of organic compound. So, here organic compound are being acetylized and followed that is water. That is being acetylized from water or the recrystallization to perform the recrystallization of acetylized from water. So, it will require chemical and apparatus. Chemical is acetylized is required. Okay, and uh, if there is a presence of some coloring impurities, okay, uh, at that time we are using the activated charge. Okay, so decolorizing agent you may say for that. Uh, in apparatus, uh, we require conical flask, uh, beaker, personal funnel for separation, the separating funnel, measuring cylinder, okay, for measurement. Now, uh, what is the general procedure for the recrystallization? Okay, so uh, and what is the we say the criteria uh, for the choosing of solvent and adding of a particular organic compound? Okay, so here is the first is choose an appropriate solvent. Now it will totally depend on the nature of compound we are doing. Okay, and uh, the most important thing is uh, that the Solvent we are using it should be volatile. Okay, for example, uh, water or alcohol is a volatile one. Okay, and in that, uh, it should be uh, the water or uh, any solvent we are using. Okay, for the crystallization, the solvent should not react with the compound. Okay, for example, we are using the alcohol. Okay, so alcohol should not react with the particular organic compound. So for choosing the appropriate solvent. And next is the your organic compound uh, should be highly soluble in higher temperature. Okay. And insoluble at home temperature. And with when you are adding the particular solvent in your organic compound, so it should be insoluble. As you uh, heat it, okay, you need to the heating point. So it should be highly soluble. So this comes under the Solvent diagram. Okay, so this is the necessity for how to choose the appropriate solvent. Okay, so it is clear in the appropriate solvent. Now, next is the non impure solvent. Okay, so what happened in this? Uh, we have to uh, weigh out the solid. Okay, so that would not be nothing but your uh, impure compound or the compound you require. Okay, so for example, we are choosing the crude solid. We have to weigh and dissolve in the particular solvent. Okay. Then, if needed, decolorize. So, I have told you that if there is a presence of coloring impurities, then you need to uh, use decolorizing agent. Okay. The next thing is crystallization. Okay. Crystallized solvent will form, and we have to collect the product and analyze the particular product. Okay. And then, uh, in this one more technique is your filtration. Okay. So, filtration is very common technique. So we have to apply it. And one more thing is important that uh, when you when you heat, okay, when you heat after uh, dissolving your organic compound in particular form, uh, it is suitable in a room temperature, okay. When you, and if, when you heat it at a high temperature, okay. So you have to fill hot filter, okay, you have to do the hot filter, you have to filter out at a immediately filter out in a hot condition. 
detail procedure we will in the uh, practical section okay and i am telling you about some uh, calculation part here so what is calculation part what is the percent recovery of the compound okay for example uh, the two things is important okay so for example here you are taking the 4 gram of acetylene so your weight of acetylene before recrystallization okay before recrystallization you are weight of acetylene or compound is 4 gram okay you are taking the 4 gram okay then after recrystallization what is the weight okay for example suppose here is uh, uh, 4 gram and uh, after recrystallization you got 3.8 gram so 4 upon 3.8 Okay, after recrystallization, you know that you are percent recovered. Okay, and then you have to write the result accordingly. The structure of the sterile. Okay, and uh, this thing that is the weight uh, before weight, after weight, and percent recovery. Okay, so the actual practical we will see practical section. Okay, so this is our practical section for performing recrystallization of our organic compound. So, this is acetylene. So, according to the uh, procedure, we have weighed about 4 gram of commercial acetylene okay, for recrystallization. And uh, the apparatus we required is conical flask, glass rod, okay, this is separating funnel, beaker, uh, measuring cylinder. So, we have weighed this 4 gram of uh, acetylene. Then we will transfer this 4 gram of acetylene into 250 ml of conical flask. Okay, so see here. We will transfer this. Okay. Now, for uh, 4 gram we need 80 ml of distilled water okay so you can see this is a distilled water okay so i will add this distilled water add in this way so in stock product uh, will go with the just like this Okay, so uh, after adding water, you can see that at room temperature or vapor heating, the acetylene is insoluble in water. Okay, so in the procedure or the criteria for the recrystallization, uh, I told you in uh, choosing appropriate solvent that uh, solvent should not be dissolved. Okay, at the room temperature. So what happened? Uh, when this uh, heating we will take heat this solution or sorry uh, this insoluble product while heating it form or the any impurity present in this uh, solvent or in this product okay so what happens the impurity will dissolve at a higher temperature and it will only dissolve in solvent only okay and after cooling the product what happens after cooling the product your uh, product will crystallize out okay but your impurity or the solid impurity present in this product will not separate out it will only dissolve in the that particular solvent okay so this is the main motto behind the separation and this is the uh, reason okay uh, why to filter at a high temperature and uh, why to cool okay so we are heating at a high temperature to just the or uh, dissolving the product as well as dissolving the impurity okay but at cooling stage the product will crystallize out okay and the impurity will just remain in the solvent okay understood now uh, will take place uh, heating now okay start okay uh, we have already added 80 ml of distilled water okay using graduated cylinder to this flask now uh, we have uh, put this flask on the burner for heating okay uh, 
we have to start it okay as a it it hits okay so we have to try to dissolve at temperature as heating increases product start or it will get dissolved okay so we so in here i told you that as heating increases solute solute as temperature increases solubility is also You can observe here that not a single particle is visible. Okay, put it up. Okay, not a single particle is visible. That means all the compound or whatever the impurity is totally dissolved in the solvent. Okay. Now immediately we have to filter out this for getting or or for crystallization. Okay. You can see that uh, there is there is no presence of any color. Okay, so there is no need to decolorize it. Okay, so we are not going to add any decolorizing agent. Okay. So this is your hot boiling solution. Okay. So we have to immediately filter out it. Okay, as it uh, hot. It is too hot. It required handle. Okay, so we grab it and we are adding this. You can see at the bottom. Okay, very clear. when filtered you will find the crystallization process okay so the very sharp crystal is formed okay at the bottom okay just look here okay very nice and sharp crystal is there you can see dalega okay just wait i will show you how the crystals are formed take it out See the crystals. Okay, so this is a very sharp crystal. This is the crystallization process. Okay, and when it uh, slowly cool down, okay, so you will see, you will find some best. crystallization or crystals at the bottom okay now it is very crystal out this is the best decrystallization process okay you can see it here okay it is very clear okay you can see here 
this filtrate we have put in the uh, cold water okay so very nice crystal it will take okay. you can see the west crystal okay then the bottom so slowly it, it will develop okay after 10 minutes in the uh, cold water now we are going to filter out it Now filtrate is not important, okay, because uh, this filtrate will contain impurity. Okay. So after completion of filtration process you can see it's filtered. Okay. The crystallization process is done. Now uh, we will dry it and uh, wait for the percent recovery calculation. Okay. Okay, after drying you can see this the crystallized product. Okay. So, with 90 percent dried Let's try to some you know, some wetness okay we'll weigh this and uh, we'll get our percent required compound okay okay you can see here most of compound we have recovered okay. near about 3.79 okay, okay. Uh, spatula also has some uh, it will increase wet yes to it yes 3.80 okay so you are compound after recrystallization okay means at starting you have or you have weighed 4 gram okay 4 gram of acetone light and after uh, recrystallization okay uh, we have recovered near about 3.80 gram of product okay so just 20 uh, yeah for uh, from 4 milligram now we have to calculate uh, we'll take this calculation okay so Calculation percent recovery. So the weight of acetylide obtained after recrystallization and weight of acetylide before crystallization. You know that the weight of acetylide before crystallization was 4 gram. Okay, and uh, now just weight uh, the, the acetylide obtained after recrystallization is 3.8. So calculated overall amount, uh, you will get the 90 percent, 95% recovery of the total compound. It is good one. So this is the total overview regarding the recrystallization. That means you can perform the recrystallization of any organic compound. Here is just an example of acetylene from water. You can go for the uh, ethanol, other solvents too, but uh, it should fulfill the criteria that it should be volatile uh, in nature okay. and should not react with a particular compound. So some, some of these uh, observations will be undertaken. Uh, during the recrystallization. Thank you.